Hello! This is a bit later than I usually do these. Um, I just slept in. Yeah, I was up until like 9 a.m. and then uh, <sighs> got up at like 5 p.m. I'm dealing with it. For fuck's sake. I hate, I really hate how uh, iTunes just opens up if you connect your iPhone to a uh, computer. Um, I am charging my phone right now because it is pretty low. Well, hopefully that doesn't change much. It also is frustrating because it just decides to supersede whatever you were actually doing with the screen, which is frustrating. I, I told the screen to do that for a reason, so I'd rather not have my computer decide that it wants to do a different thing. Whatever. Here we go. I want to get some things done before Nook's Cranny closes down at 10. Okay. And because my phone is charging, it's going to be a little lower than usual. Although, I usually have to look over to see the chat. So, if you say anything, um, I might not be checking it as much. So, apologies if it uh, takes a bit. Alright. Um, oh, good. I still have my stuff. I uh, bought turnips yesterday, so usually that means that I moved all of my inventory to make room. Uh, actually, I'm going to turn. turn up to theater mode, which is super ugly, but it will not affect what you guys see. It will just affect my screen so that I can actually, like, see it. Oh, good. The audio immediately cut out. Thanks, Elgato. You're a piece of crap. I hate the Elgato, but it's pretty much the only game in town, as far as I can tell. So, it's frustrating. Blanche, I don't remember if I mentioned Blanche. Uh, when Drago moved out a week or so ago, um, Blanche is the one who moved in. She is the, a snooty type, which basically means she acts like any snooty character in a kid's show, like a Rarity from, from My Little Pony, or a What's-Her-Face. Uh... Cleo Denial from Monster High. I miss Monster High. They decided to make some really crappy toys to go along with their, their reboot. And, uh, yeah. As it turns out, nobody likes it when you cheap out on the main focus of the series. So, did not sell well. The whole thing just fell apart. Oh, uh, well. It happens, you know. There's, uh... A lot of business nonsense that goes into shows about toys. It's the same... It's the, it's the opposite reason of why Milo Pony ended up going... Uh, Milo Pony Friendship is Magic went for nine seasons when it kind of only needed two? I think there might be two. Well, no, if we're going 26 episodes, I say there is about one solid season of that show if you break everything down. Mega blocks for Monster High. I don't know. I I I think the dolls are pretty cool. The the designs are kind of interesting. Um, I have some of them. Coco has a big collection of them and has like the the biggest thing is that like doll customizers, which is a whole circle on YouTube and stuff. Um, they would mostly use Monster High bases because they were just the best base doll to use for whatever they were trying to make. Um. I'd suggest, if you're interested at all, go check out Doll Lightful on uh, YouTube. She's uh, a girl who lives in... Uh, a, a woman who lives in Korea who makes some awesome customized dolls. She's done, like, uh, ones for each of the evolutions from Pokemon. Every, like... Every, um... Every Halloween, she does some really cool stuff. And, like, she goes she goes ham on it. She did a Xerneas one where she, like, actually, like, wired in a bunch of LEDs so that it would actually light up. And uh, she's, like... There are times where she's effectively just recreated a doll from scratch by, like, cutting it apart, 
reworking its its limbs and stuff, adding a bunch of like um, different stuff to it. So it's really cool stuff. Definitely her Halloween stuff, especially, is really cool. Um, but pretty much all of it's pretty neat. Like definitely worth checking out for a bit, especially if you like DIY stuff at all, because there's some really interesting stuff that she ends up doing in the name of making a doll look like another thing. Man, I really wish I knew why the audio just cuts out sometimes. It's probably just my computer getting overloaded. I should get a new computer if I want to stream. I feel the the, the streams are uh, kind of require a bit more, a bit more power. Stickers, yeah, I can't handle stickers at all. Um, I'm okay with them, but oof, God, that reminds me. Um, one of my favorite board games, Village. Which is, it's a Euro game, and I would say it's it's a pretty good one, even. Um, but uh, but part of the setup for that game, the, the initial setup when you get it, is that they have like a hundred something meeples. Let me think, there's four, then three, three, then two, so that's uh, 12. 12 times four, 48. Something, yeah. I don't know. There, there's a crap load of meeples, and you have to number each one with a numbered sticker on each side of them. So double-sided, near a little over a hundred stickers, and it, yeah, it took me like an hour when I got it, but it was worth it because that game I, I enjoy a great deal. It's super fun. I would highly recommend it to anyone interested in getting into Euro games. Um, I'd recommend it way above Catan, because actually Catan, not great. Catan is okay, but I would say it's actually a little bit of a, a weaker one, because the issues with Catan, and I mean, I, I generally, like, I, I'm planning on making a video series that's sort of a retrospective review analysis thing. Um, just my thoughts about different games in a kind of chill format, but, uh, Catan, the, the big issues are mainly, ah, oh, snail, get him, or hermit crab, I guess, um, yeah, it's, uh, C C Catan's okay, I've definitely played worse games, I mean, we were talking about Monopoly on the last stream, and that, that is by far a much worse game, but, uh, Catan, the issue with Catan really comes down to um, luck, like the uh, the die rolls like decide a good portion of what happens in that game, and um, trading trading is just beyond frustrating. I I just it, it's annoying because it basically means that. If you have people who don't get how to trade and how to especially figure out when trading is definitely over, whether people say it or not, um, is uh, a pain because each turn can go on for like five to ten minutes because people just won't get that they aren't going to be able to trade anything. And plus trading in general, it's like it's always kind of a flawed piece of design because like why would anyone trade something that doesn't always help them if they are not completely like positive that it will help them out like and p possibly screw you over it's like why would they trade with you the only thing that you can hope for is that you trade with someone who doesn't know what they're doing or someone who uh you have enough like leverage with that they won't screw you over which is another big thing with monopoly like all the trading in that it, generally just freeform trading is a problem in games i find it's like it's a it's fun sure um it's fun to trade but it's it's a pain because if you don't set limitations or like specific guidelines it it, it just turns into a mess 
especially I see so many people fumble with the trading in Catan specifically um, when they first play it because they they don't know how to handle a trade in a way that makes sense with communication. Like often people will like say uh, people will like say they want to trade something like I want to trade sheep and then it's like I have sheep. Oh no, I mean I have sheep. I want to trade it for something else or the opposite or something like that and like people just have a hard time communicating things um and they rarely uh, I mean I went over this in my my whiteboard games for Catan which I definitely recommend watching if you haven't watched it and you know the rest of the series uh quick aside like dose my my video on on how to play dose I would say is the best starting point because it is overall the funniest and the shortest so it's it's quick and fun and uh, seems to be pretty popular. Uh, that aside, um, but uh, yeah, the, my my point in that is like I just gave like a quick tutorial of how I've found trading to work best, but that's like not what they say in the rules. They just say you can trade at any time, and like the the rules for trading to the banks is is more clear. Like they're very specific about that, but trading between each other, it's just like you can trade. Anytime you want to. And it's like, I, what? But that's, you need to be more clear about how trades work and like how often you can do it and stuff or it's just going to turn into a mess. But, um, yeah, that's, that's all aside. My, my general rule for trading is if you were trading something, if you were saying I am trading this, you may as well just show it so that it's clear what you have and because you've said it. So it's not like, it's secret anymore, so as just say out loud, like, I have this, and show what you have, and I want this, and say what you want, and then you can get counteroffers and stuff, but, like, I don't know. It's it just it's hard to get people into that groove to do that. <sighs> Overall, I don't know. It, it, Catan's fine. I, I've played it a few times. I've had fun with it. The modular board is really fun. I, I, it's really nice and tactile, um, but it's not, not perfect, I would say. Oh, jeez. Excuse me. I just ate before this. I don't know if that picked up on mic, but, uh, my, my stomach digesting. It's a lot of, a lot of random noise. I don't think the microphone picked that up. Honestly, I should have probably just not said anything. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to take a break real quick. I need to get more water. So I will, uh, BRB.
Okay, I am back. Ah. But uh, yeah, I uh, I will probably do a video fully on just uh, explaining my my feelings about Catan at some point. But I would recommend if you want to get into Euro games or really any of the the better board games that exist, I would actually recommend uh, Carcassonne first because it's much much more streamlined. Much quicker to explain, much quicker to grasp, less moving parts, and uh, just generally really fun. Like, that's one of my forever games. I've played it so many times, and I think... I think I'm never going to get tired of it, really. Like, at, at this point, there's a, there's something called the, the five-game rule, or maybe it's the four-game rule. But basically, if you can play a game five times without getting tired of it, That's a game you will be able to play forever, basically. Like, you probably just won't be tired of it. Um, but a lot of games, after after five plays, just kind of peter out. They, they've shown you everything that they have to offer, which is unfortunate. But, you know, that's just, that's just game design, dude. Heck, some, uh, some video games don't even get five games. They just kind of peter out after one like one of my favorite games uh dragon quest heroes rocket slime which i will be playing on the stream at some point because I, I love it so much i just gotta figure out how to do the uh ds emulation because it was a nintendo ds game um that game it's easy to 100 percent without even trying i've 100 percented that game every time i've played it and I was literally, like, trying to dawdle to make it last longer. Oh, excuse me. A little bit of a... Gas. Um, so, I would highly recommend that game, though. It's super fun. And if you can find it um, for a good price, like, uh, it's definitely worth at least one play. Ah. That's what, well, that's the thing is, like, longevity is, is such a difficult thing to handle in games, especially, like, video games, because, I mean, they are, by standard, $60, so you want to feel like you got your money's worth, and I feel like I'm just straight up quoting, um, sequelitis at this point, but, uh, Yeah, you you got to find a way to make your game last. And with board games, even more so, because they can be twice as expensive, and you're expected to play them multiple times. Like, that's the whole point of a board game. It's not like a, a single playthrough thing, and you, you play it with, like, a few people. Whoa. Almost open Kurt's package. Whoops. Did not... Thankfully, but almost. Hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely that. I also, um, to talk about stream plans for a minute, I'm probably going to stream some of this uh, new game that I got that was on sale. I'd heard good things, and the good things were definitely warranted. I'm having a great time with it. Uh, dicey dungeons it's the art style is definitely very uh tumblr you know it, it it has a very specific style that i'm sure most people will immediately uh either like or dislike and yeah it is, that's just taste i personally think it's pretty cute but i can understand if anybody's off put about it because of the specific style but it is a uh it is a really fun game, and it has some really fun ideas that I, I would really love to share with everybody. So I will um, play that maybe sometime later this week. Wednesday, maybe? I don't know yet. I, I still have to uh, work out my plans. Tomorrow I'm doing a marathon of uh, Steven Universe Future with my sibling who lives in Seattle. We're going to... We're going to figure out some way to watch that together. And that's going to take up most of my day 
really. I mean, like I said, I got up at like five, six something. I don't remember. So I'm probably going to be just up until then. And then Wednesday is always wrestling night because AEW Dynamite's on. So who knows? We will we will see. Just keep checking the schedule. Keep checking the schedule underneath the stream on the browser version. I will I will update it as plans are made and keep watching my Twitter because I'll tweet out when I'm going live. Um sometimes with a specific time, other times I'll just say I'm I'm gonna do it. And generally that means within Within a few minutes, I'll be going live. Oh, whoop, Leonardo. Uh, not quite the red nose, like the Muppet nose era so much, but, um, that's a pretty good price. Um, mm, like, What's what's a good example? Not quite Thundercats Roar, uh, but in that kind of range, like not full on like Cal Arts style, which that I could talk for quite a while about the whole Cal Arts thing. I don't think it's necessarily a problem. My what I think is the problem is that far too many people who do the Cal Arts program take the wrong lessons from it. Because one of the major things that they teach you in, in character design in CalArts, by my understanding, I did not attend, um, but is, is the silhouette. You have to have a unique silhouette so that your characters are instantly recognizable. But a lot of people take that to mean like, oh, okay, big, broad, geometric shapes, you know... Uh, really obvious like dramatic differences that almost feel like they are completely different styles I'm not a fan of that but then you can look at something like uh, She-Ra I've been watching the the Netflix She-Ra show with Coco and I mean with most things it comes down to how good the writing is but while that does have um it does have some of the hallmarks of like the the Cal Arts thing. It's it's subtle enough. Like each of the characters has a unique silhouette in a way that is recognizable but is not like obnoxious. Like it's not clearly trying to be unique, you know? Cuz you can still have the subtle differences that make people look different cuz in general if everyone is the same species it can be assumed that they will have generally the same body type and such. Like, not, like, exactly, like, the same, but, like, uh, like, when you see actual people, they still all look like they're human. They just look like they're different humans. So there's, like, a range that you have to work in to make them feel like they're actual people. And if you try to go too extreme, while that's not technically a problem, I feel that it can become pretty obnoxious, especially when quite a lot of people do it. But then you can look at something, like, look at uh, Pen Ward. And I know that, like, a lot of people consider Adventure Time to be, like, the 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 uh, progenitor of all of this. Like, it is the, the the thing that really set a lot of it up, but it's, like... The characters all do have, like, unique silhouettes and everything, but they all, like, are still generally cohesive, you know? And the ones who are, like, extremely different are a different species. Like, even the most extreme human examples would be, like, Ice King, who is is under a horrible curse... And Susan Strong, who is not human. Or at least, I don't think she's human anymore. She's a mutant or something. She's like a cat person. I don't know. They, they explained it at some point. It's been a while since I watched Adventure Time. Uh, 
I pretty much only like Beast Wars was my uh was the, the my Transformer show mainly cuz it was just what was on growing up. I went back and watched some of it. It uh wow, it does not age well. <laughs> like part of it is that it was very early CG like in the way that uh Oh, what was it? Not System Shock. Um, what was that show? That was like really early, like CG. It was like they they would like jump into the computer and stuff, and it like it it was really inspiring to a lot of people who make CG animation. But it's like ooh, it looks pretty awful. Reboot. Yep, that's it. It's reboot. Well, that's my point, is that it's like, a lot of people point to Adventure Time as the thing that kind of started a lot of the, the trends with the CalArts and stuff, but it's like, it is a perfect example of why that's not really a thing, because it's still very unique. That is Penn Ward style. It's not just um, a style that's generally molded together from the lessons that were taught. And even Steven Universe, which people have problems with, but, like, with Steven Universe, like, again, the people all look like people, more or less, and then the ones who don't look like people are the ones who are space aliens, so that makes sense. Like, there's logic to it. Transformers Animated, is that the one... Is that the one that has, like, Steve Bloom as a uh, Starscream? The one that went, uh, that had sort of a more clean-cut style? Less of the, 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 uh, uh, not like the 80s one, right? Or maybe it was. I don't, I don't know. Like I said, I, I know Beast Wars mainly, but... Yeah, da, 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 da. but my understanding, like Transformers, is um. Tom Kenny, right? I isn't Steve Bloom in that one though? He's in one of them, I think. As somebody. Um. I was. I was thinking about Transformers recently uh, on Game Grumps. They were talking about uh, on Game Grumps. They were talking about how a lot of people are mad about reboots or whatever or like remakes and stuff. And especially like Transformers, they're like, "Oh, it's so different." But as Aaron Hansen pointed out, as a fan of Transformers toys, like. The, there hadn't been Transformers toys for quite a while before that. Like, not to the level that they once were. Like, they were had pretty much gone by the wayside. There weren't really many Transformers series or anything. And then the Transformers live-action movies came out, and they it brought so many more Transformers back. And that's it, his point in general, is like, even if you don't like the remake of the thing you love, at the very least you can enjoy all of the new merch that they bring back. And often, a lot of the merch that they bring back is specifically designed to look nostalgic because they're hoping to bring in the nostalgia crowd. So, you know, it's it's not the worst thing. It, it, there's, there's a positive side to cash grab remakes. And I mean, uh, they're not always good, but like... Even the not-so-good remakes are still, like, somewhat entertaining. Like, I remember being entertained by the Terminator movies. Or not the Terminator mo uh Transformers movies. They're not good, full stop, but they are... They are something. They, they did something. And while it might not have been good, it was certainly... Uh, something to see. Uh, bees. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. It's like the um, like there were still toys, but like they they had dropped off immensely. And that's the same thing with Ghostbusters, especially with this new Ghostbusters that's about to come out with Finn Wolfhard, which I, eh, I'm glad that he's getting work and everything, like go Finn, but also it would be nice to see some new kid actors because there are a lot of great child actors out there and far too many of them are uh, not getting work because it's pretty much just hire the Stranger Things kids. Oh, what is this surfboard business? What is this? What's this about? I will pass, but this is new. I guess they're doing four items now? I'm not complaining. I just would have liked to know. Yeah, I know they're in limited supply. I come in every day, dude. I'll buy it. <laughs> nice. The Transformers I mostly remember as a kid were the, um, were not the, like, really fun ones that, like, could do, like, a big transformation. The ones I mostly remember were the ones that were basically, like, a Hot Wheel and the arms would just kind of pop out. The top, the like front of the car would flip back, and the feet would just kind of pop down, and that was it. That was the whole transformation. Um, although I did have an awesome Beast Wars one, that was uh, that was uh, like it was like a wolf eagle hybrid. So it was like a wolf eagle hybrid that also turned into a vehicle of some sort. And it turned into something in between. So it was like a wolf, and then you could turn it into an eagle, and then you could turn it into a wolf eagle, and maybe a vehicle. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. I lost it as a kid, so I definitely do not have it anywhere. Um, oh, I should have... Shoot, I should have sold some stuff while I was in there. Maybe? I don't know. I I, it, I was pretty young when I had it. I remember specifically the commercial had like a wolf falling in or the, the wolf and the eagle like falling into some kind of like goo and then coming out as the toy. I also remember having one. I, it wasn't a Transformer. It was actually a Digimon toy, but it it, it, it was a Transformer. So it, like it wasn't a Transformer brand, but it was like... It was for the second arc, um, after the one with, like, Ty and Matt and all of them, and it was, like, the main blue Digimon that was, that had the, like, rhino horn on its nose, and the, like, worm Digimon, but it was their champion forms, and, again, it was, like, you could transform it to one or the other, or... Uh, the whatever their like fusion digivolve was, and that one was fun. I also had like the the Digimon trading card game as a kid. I never played it once because I I was um my my older sibling was t be too cool for school at that point. Wouldn't play with me. My uh younger brothers were like too young to really grasp it, and my parents didn't did not want to play so. Yeah, I, I don't know. Man, I was a kid, so maybe it was dumb. But I, I enjoyed playing around with that specific toy. Most of the time when I had a Transformer or something, I mostly just enjoyed, like, constantly transforming them because uh, something about the... Just the process of, like, spinning and twisting and moving everything around. It was basically like a fidget toy. I also had one that was 
a little newer. I think it was like a little before the the Michael Bay movies, but it was a shark. It, it was like a shark that would transform into a robot. And I kept losing the like side panels that were its gills. So it was always kind of open. It was one of those ones. I, I was never a fan of this, but um, I don't really like the Transformers where there are pieces that pop off. Then when you tr after you transform, you pop them back on. Uh, I didn't like that because A, it was easy to lose them. And B, it, it just felt like bad design. Like if we're to assume that this is a, a robot that can transform with all of its pieces, like why would it have pieces that come off? Like it just jettisons them off and and goes and grabs them again or something. I don't I don't get the logic there. Which I don't know how common that was in Transformers, but at least with that one, I found I felt it was a little disappointing. Yeah, it's it's just. Like, I'll, I'll accept something like how Optimus Prime, when he transforms, he just kind of loses the, like, cargo container on his back. I'll accept that. I still feel like that's a little annoying. And uh, uh, you would be able to answer this. Have they actually designed Optimus Primes? They must have at this point. Have they designed Optimuses that have, like, a... Um, like a a transforming storage container like the storage container that is on him can it transform into i don't know armor or something like it's actually a part of it and not just falling away yeah okay so it was like a playset i guess that's kind of cool um, I don't know. I, I found that was like kind of cheap though. And I feel like that's just prob probably like a disconnect between the toy department and the, uh, the actual show department. But I, I would love to see a Transformers property that has transformations that look cool on screen but that still work one-to-one -one with the transformation in the toy. There there has to be ways to do it. Like, there are really clever things you can do. I mean, you can look at... It, it, looking at just the history of Transformers, like how different and, like, varied the transformations have become over time as manufacturing has become uh, more advanced and as just design sensibilities have become more advanced... Okay. Yeah, I figured, like, that has to be a, a consideration when it comes to specifically designing Optimus. What? Then Megatron... Didn't Megatron originally just turn into, like, a gun? And then later he became a jet or something? What is, what is he in a vehicle form? I mean, I guess there's so many iterations. He was a T-Rex in Beast Wars. I remember that. Yeah, Megatron was just a gun. And I know that they didn't keep that because, like, people complained. Because people think kids don't know what a gun is. Or they don't want kids to play with guns I guess I mean that's the thing is even if a kid is just holding a stick like a slight bend in it they'll probably say it's a gun our our culture has just decided that like guns are of such utmost importance that it's just a natural default for our brains god this this setting on my monitor is really ugly it's it's brighter for like the the outside while it's raining and dark and stuff but uh 
Oh boy, it's ugly. The the colors are so blown out and oversaturated. A tank. What was it in the movies? I can't even remember him being like transformed in any of the the live action movies. I wasn't paying attention. I didn't realize I don't didn't have any new new fossils. Excuse me. Oh, good. I got all the daily doubles. One and done. Nice. I have exactly six minutes to go and sell stuff before uh, before Nook's Cranny closes. Awesome. This timed out perfectly. Might be a bit of a short stream, but you know what? Sometimes it happens, you know? Did I? I think I talked to Quilson. If I didn't, I mean, I might have done it earlier, too. I did play a little bit um, earlier today. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Like, that he would uh, be kind of a, an inverse of Optimus. God, air conditioning is the best. I live in southern Georgia, so it's it's been getting pretty warm lately. And, and the thing is, like, if it was this warm in Washington, where I'm originally from, it uh it wouldn't be that bad because it's it's pretty like dry, so the temperatures don't go too wild. But uh, here in Georgia, man, it's just the tiniest bit of heat. It's so humid that it, it it's it's awful. It's so awful. Ugh, I cannot tolerate. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Here's a question for you, one. Um, are there any good Transformers games that I could play on stream at some point? Because, ah, crap, I forgot to sell that one. I need to check the term prices anyways. Because I know when it comes to, like, uh, licensed games, it, it can be hit or miss of whether they're any good. And I missed that. How did I do that? I might at some point also play um, Rampage World Tour, which was the, the Rampage game that was like 3D and you had to do all sorts of wild stuff to, uh, that's a pretty good price. I'll, I'll wait till tomorrow. Um, uh, like, you had to actually do all sorts of interesting stuff to not only get the <coughs> the unlockable characters to show up, but to actually like, find them at the right time and stuff and there, there was like a hundred um like different characters you could play in that one and they all had like backstories and stuff the same way that ralph uh ralph lizzie and uh george george had i had to think about the movie which if you haven't seen the uh the Rampage movie starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson from a couple years back. Uh, you don't really have to. It's fine. You know, it's it's just like a studio... A studio action movie. It was okay. It, it, it feels like there's some, like, missed opportunities it being rampage and stuff and and they do actively like have like a rampage arcade cabinet and stuff at one point and they do have a shot where like george the ape even though he is the the like one of the heroes uh just full-on eating somebody 
the same way, just drop him in his mouth, like in the arcade game. But, you know, that's, that's a whole other deal. Yeah, I mean, they were still, like, mutations, basically. Like, they were genetic, or not mutate, they, genetic experiments, I guess. But, yeah, it was weird that they, uh, they decided to, to do it that way. And also to have them, like, while still generally the same, just skewed slightly so. Like, George was an albino ape. Ralph could, like... Like, um, Ralph was like a porcupine kind of, like, wolf hybrid and could, like, glide like a flying squirrel. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't really get what was happening with all of that or what they were, um, they were trying to convey, really. Uh... Not to say it was too bad. It, it was entertaining, but it was just it, strange. Uh, no? No, 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 I wanna... I want to rotate... That way, there we go. Drop it in there. There we go. Done! That looks nice. Yeah! Put it right under the... The dripping window. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, it's it's not really worthwhile. Honestly, I might do like a short video explaining the my disappointment with it because it's just like it was so close to being like maybe kind of a fun adaptation. As it stands, it's a video game movie that a lot of people didn't even realize came out or there was a video game movie that's more or less just inoffensive. It's fine. It's it's not great, not bad, but being not bad is a uh, honestly like the most we can hope for with a lot of video game movies. A lot of them are so bad that it's like one that's just okay. It can be considered pretty good, like the, the Silent Hill movies. They're okay, but it's not anything great. The the games though, I remember playing Rampage in the arcade. In the very brief time in my childhood when arcades were still a thing. And now now they exist, but they're like niche boutique hipster joints. Where you gotta like... I don't know. Barcades. It's cute, but it's not... It's not the same thing, man. It's just not the same feel. Hmm. Alright, that being said. I am gonna end this here. I pretty much got everything done. Um, and it's it's pretty late. So, I will end this here. Thank you for everyone who watched. Thanks to everyone who watches in the future on the past broadcast tab or on the archived YouTube channel, which is linked down below the uh, the stream on the browser version. Uh, oh, yeah, real quick. Uh, movie theaters don't even really have arcades much anymore. Like, I went to the movies a lot before the pandemic started, and, like, they... they just they don't really do arcades anymore they used to have like house of the dead and stuff but like not did they just kind of gut it all that it's unfortunate i liked that stuff a lot um but yes thank you to everyone who's watching who will watch later in the past broadcasts or on the uh, archive channel which is linked below on the browser version i also have my personal youtube channel where i'm going to be posting some things in the coming future so please check that out also check out my twitter where i will post when i'm about to stream and other things which is right down there at iggy d kid on twitter um and also the schedule is under uh the stream on the browser version so that's subject to change but that will give you an idea just check back every now and then to see when I'll be doing stuff, if there's anything you're really interested in. Um, but yeah, that's, that's everything. Thanks. Thanks for watching everybody. Good night. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good night.